Hello, I'm Severin Suzuki speaking for ECHO, the Environmental Children's Organization. We're a group of 12 and 13 year olds trying to make a difference. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet, you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? Welcome back to another Andrew Says I Am Your Favorite Cambodian YouTuber. Remember, I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. I've been looking into famous Greta's, you guys. There's not really any outside of the climate girl. And you can't count Greta Van Fleet either. Van Vliet, such as the Raptors player, Greta Van Fleet. Wow, is that what they really look like? Pretty surprising there. Now, I don't want to pick on Greta. She's just a child, but I want to pick on her handlers. The same people have been peddling the same thing for like 30 years, longer than I've been alive since I'm only 19. And it's the same people that's been touting this doomsday thing over and over again. And it's really going to come full circle. It did for me, looking into this stuff. Now, what I want to point out from the outset is Hawkwood's never scientists talking about any of this stuff. Only on the Joe Rogan experience will you find actual climate uh, knowledgeable people and climate scientists, environmentalists, actually talking about these issues. It's always Al Gore or Prince Charles, as if some prince knows a lot about the climate for some reason. There's also Bill Nye, which I don't want you to mention because I don't want to have to show you this, his stand-up comedy routine. He's just playing a character, you guys. It's sad. It's like Larry the Cable Guy who's been getting into playing one character his whole life. He thinks that he is him. But Larry the Cable Guy probably more entertaining than Bill Nye, definitely in the stand-up. But they don't care about the actual environment. That's what I'm trying to get across here. They care about getting money, getting power, and manipulating you through the use of children. Don't believe me, you say? Well, check out this from 1992. I am afraid to go out in the sun now because of the holes in our ozone. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Did you have to worry of these things when you were my age? The first thing I want to point out is how much nicer does the girl from 1992 come across? I mean, really, she's not really chastising you as badly as Greta is, but this is also the look of a guy who's saying, why am I here listening to a 12-year-old? I flew from Japan, and I have to sit here and listen to this. He probably knew about it already. I would assume they usually do. All this is happening before our eyes, and yet we act as if we have all the time we want and all the solutions. There will not be any solutions or plans presented in line with these figures here today, because these numbers are too uncomfortable and you are still not mature enough to tell it like it is. Oh, yes, little girl. You are correct. We are not mature enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Don't you see what's going on here? Do you see? <laughs> Don't worry. That's not it, though. There's more. I am only a child, yet I know if all the money spent on war was spent on finding environmental answers, ending poverty, and finding treaties, what a wonderful place this earth would be. You are failing us, but the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. Do not forget why you are attending these conferences, who you're doing this for. We are your own children. You are deciding what kind of a world we are growing up in. Parents should be able to comfort their children by saying, everything's going to be all right. It's not the end of the world. And we're, and we're doing the best we can. But I don't think you can say that to us anymore. Are we even on your list of priorities? No, you're not on the high list of priorities, little girl. I'm sorry to tell you. Little girl coming here to lecture us is not usually on high-level business people's to-do list for the day. Go to a real elected government, a real elected body. 
People can actually do things that people have to be held responsible for. Nobody actually has to do what the UN says. That's why it's so stupid. That's why it's a huge farce that we're led to believe as children, as youth, that the UN mattered at all. Now, you want proof that the UN and this whole thing is just a charade, a sharam. You know what Greta actually filed as her complaint with a bunch of other children for some reason as young as eight and up to 17? They called something, or they filed a complaint about something called the Convention of the Rights of the Child, which was signed by pretty much every country in 1990. So they complained about Germany, France, uh, Brazil, Argentina, and Turkey. They complained that they didn't do enough. And what's actually in this legislation, this piece of legislation, we'll call it? The obligation of all state parties to move quickly to prohibit the, and eliminate all corporal punishment and other cruel or degrading forms of punishment of children. Take all appropriate legislative, administrative, social, and educational measures to protect the child from all forms of physical or mental violence. So basically that just means do everything in the world and correct everything that's ever been done bad to children. Which is obviously ridiculous statements to get people to agree to, and that's why it means nothing. But the funny thing is they didn't ask this of India or China, but they go after all these countries that are the nice ones. The ones that will do what we ask and play this whole game of PR and the charade and give us money and do things for us. Because if you went and cried to India, the United States, or China, they would say, go away. We're not taking, it's very nice what you've said, but we're not just giving you money based on sympathy of pretend things. Now here's something I want you to pay attention to in the last part of the video. Take a look at this. My dad always says, you are what you do, not what you say. Well, what you do makes me cry at night. She mentions her dad. Now, where do I know her dad from? This girl's name is Severn Suzuki. It's not Suzuki Cars, is it? Oh, that's right, she's David Suzuki's daughter, the environmental activist from the 90s who told us that if we don't turn off our porch lights at night, we're going to destroy the planet and the ozone layer. David Suzuki? Oh, hi, Bob. Just changing this wasteful bulb with something more modern and efficient. What's one light bulb gonna do? So that's who we're sending is activist children. This isn't just a, children, a child who had the bright idea to do this themselves. Just like Greta, it's, it's all part of a plan. We're just going to indoctrinate our children to say what we want them to say and uh, move the political pieces we want them to do. The guy, David Suzuki, is also the guy who complained to Canada's environment minister, Catherine McKenna, who is terrible as well, that Canada wasn't doing enough to adhere to the Paris Climate Agreement. It's almost as if, it's almost as if these people have something to gain from all this. Saying the same things over and over to get legislation passed and to get people into positions of power and we'll just change the name further and further along the line. The scam never stops it seems. And yes, the climate changes. And yes, we should not pollute. We should not dump garbage in the ocean. We should find recyclable materials. But this whole push is not about saving the environment at all. It's about a scam to put people in power where we want them to be. And it's the only scam that works anymore. They just want to take money from oil companies and exchange the, that's all they want to do is exchange the pockets of which the money is going into. What makes the most money in North America? It's the oil companies. Do you think it's just a coincidence that all the Republicans are, like the Bushes, for example, are rich off oil? And then you've got the AOCs, the Bernies, and the uh, Al Gores who want to push alternative energies in the most radical form. We don't want to slowly, you know, change change over time and not collapse our economy. We just want to destroy the country, but at least we've changed clean energy, you guys. At least where there will be no country anymore, like that movie Red Dawn where North Korea invades. That's the only way it'll happen. If you put the Green New Deal in, North Korea and China can then invade. So one side has its own friends and the other side has its other friends. Where's my microphone? The deep state and, uh, no wait, I'm not even using this one. <clears throat> the deep state, we need to, exercise the demons of the deep state who are trying to do, commit a uh, genetic climate catastrophe and destroy all the humanoids from the third dimension and the space elves. That's essentially what we're looking at here, people. But what I'm saying is when the race wars don't work, when the gender wars don't work, when the gun control narratives don't work, you gotta piss people off about something to make it so that we can give you money. 
That's what it's all about, transitioning the power here and giving the people that we want to give money to, those are the right people. You know, the, the kindest, the gentlest, the most environmentally friendly people are the ones that I, that I believe in. The other side, they just want to give money to the evil people. My billionaires would not, uh, would not do anything wrong. And they use the children for this, just like they did it in the, uh, the gun control debate with the Parkland survivors. They do this because those are the only ones that believe their levels of insincerity. You, it doesn't take hard to, it doesn't take a lot to convince a child that you want to do the right thing because children innately want to do the right thing. But it does take some coercion. And when you have an 18 year old like David Hogg, he's just going to go along with it and be like, okay, I understand what's going on here. Sure, let's do it. But when you have children as young as eight being involved in this activism, You've got to manipulate them, and it's always somebody behind them, like we saw with David Suzuki using his own daughter, and now these Thunbergs or Thunbergs using their own daughter because it benefits them. They're not going after the biggest polluters, China, India, and the United States. They're going after everybody else. Shame on you. Shame on you for not giving me money. Shame on you for not donating to my foundations. Because these people can't actually do anything. They can sign the 1990 Convention of Being Nice to Children's Act. They can sign the Paris Climate Accord. But none of these are actually legally binding. So all we do is we put people in a public relations scenario where if they don't actually do it, then we can say, you're bad. They don't actually have to do anything though. And that's why they don't bring this to proper legislators. That's why when the gun control kids brought it to the floor that it got massively downvoted and they're like, what's going on here, you guys? Why won't you save the children? It's because these actual ideas, like the Green New Deal, for example, when put into practice are not practical. And at some point, these politi actual politicians who are are elected by people, unlike the UN, know that they're going to have to answer to their constituents. And if they put something completely stupid into practice, that their constituents aren't going to vote for them because they'll have no money. And when people don't have any money, they get a little upset. And by the way, David Suzuki, if you leave a light on like the entire day, it costs like a dollar. Ask any electrician. Once you become an adult, you realize that turning on and leaving a light on for a few hours isn't that big of a deal.